if there's one thing that will change your life, if there's one thing that will transform and attract all the things that you want in your life is to become more confident. If you want the success, if you want the dream career, if you want your dream man, the dream relationship, it comes down to one thing. You need to become more confident in who you are, my dears, my lovelies. So often, us women, we put so much focus on how we look externally. We spend so much money on lotions and potions, on our designer handbag and the expensive outfits and the high heels to attract that dream person. We think that this is what's going to make us bring in that dream person and bring us that dream relationship that we want, the marriage. But the truth is, the truth is, confidence is what attracts what you want. It's going to attract that man that you want, the career, you get that promotion, bring you opportunities. It comes down to confidence. Confidence is sexy. <laughs> it really is. And in this video, I want to share with you a few things that really helped me to overcome my journey of being an insecure person in the past to becoming a lot more confident, accepting myself in who I am now. And I've seen the transformation in my own life. So I hope these suggestions can help you. So let's get straight into it. Point number one, this is something that you may not expect to hear. Point number one, how to become confident. You need to wake the AF up. What do I mean by this? I mean, wake up. Hello. I wish someone had done this to me when I was so busy just thinking of my insecurities and letting life pass by. I realized that I was wasting so much time living in my own head about my own insecurities and limited beliefs and life was just passing by me. And I had to freaking wake up and tell myself, Rosina, do you really want to get to your 70s, 80s and look back and think that I've lived most of my life doubting myself, lived most of my life hating my body? Like, is that the way I want to really look back at my life? Not reaching my full potential because of spots that I had or because I felt like I did not fit into the beauty standards because society said that this is not the way I should look. I had to shake myself and realize, give myself a really hard talk. So I thought if I continued down this road of doubting myself and not feeling like I am pretty enough to wear the sexy outfit, what a way to live. I had like a flashback almost or realization, an awakening, if that's what we want to call it, that do I really want to look back and feel like I lived a life that was boxed in, restricted, like, woo me, I'm not good enough. I am not pretty enough and I'm not intelligent enough to go after my dream. I may as well settle with the things that I have and complain. So I had to realize that in order to change my life, in order to go after the things I wanted to, in order to attract the things that I wanted to in my life, I had to become a different person. I had to accept myself. I had to become confident. I had enough. I had enough of doubting myself. I had enough of not liking myself of not liking my body because society said, this is not the way your body should look like. Your waist needs to be tiny thin like this and you need to have bum up to here. <laughs> it's like, I had enough. This is not living, this is surviving. This is wasting your life away. So my lovelies, I know that went a bit deep, but I hope, I want you to realize that your time here, your life here, is precious, it's a gift. 
you cannot turn the clock back. And what you do with your time is extremely important. Like, do you really want to spend most of your time doubting yourself and your abilities? Or do you want to go for the things that you want to go, go for because you only get one shot in life? Think about why you have these confidence issues, these low confidence, low self-esteem issues. And think about what's holding you back. Understanding that these are limiting beliefs. And think about, do you really want to live your life in this way? The precious, the precious time that we have in this world that we will not get back. Do you really want to stop yourself from going after the things that you want to. If you let your insecurities and your self-esteem get in the way, that means you will be living a life very limited and restricted. Or do you want to go for it because you get one shot in life? Do you want to go reach your full potential? Because if you don't take that chance, then you will never know. I know which one I would choose now having made the mistakes in the past of being so fearful and scared. Point number two, how to become more confident. How to become more confident and accept yourself is to stop comparing yourself to others. This is the number one reason why a lot of us doubt ourselves. The truth is the reason why you dislike things about yourself is because you're comparing yourself to other people. And we all do it. It's normal for us to compare ourselves to other people. And that's where we start doubting ourselves if we start feeling like we are inferior, we are good, not good enough. We look at what someone else is doing and they seem like they are much more further ahead than we start doubting our abilities. If you want to become more confident, you need to understand that you, my lovelies, my dears, you are on your own lane. You are your own competition, not Melissa's, not Nazmin's, not Sarah's. You are your own competition. The minute you start racing with someone else, that's a losing battle. I know before, for example, when I was a teenager, the beauty standards was to be thick, thin, skinny, like Kate Moss. I don't know if you know who she is. Maybe, bef maybe well before your time. And I remember looking at girls around me at the time and it was a trend to be skinny. And I remember wanting to be the same. So I forced my body, although my body was not designed to fit in to this beauty ide ideology, I forced myself not to eat. I used to make myself sick. I made myself sick. That's a classical example of me trying to fit into society's beauty standards because someone decided that this is what beautiful is. And then everyone is following the trend. Can you see how we get sucked in to society's standards and expectations of what society dictates what we should be like? And that's why you need to understand that following all these expectations is a losing battle. Understanding that you are your own individual person. And I know with social media these days, it can be so hard not to compare. And a little bit of comparison, I think is okay for motivation, for inspiration. But when we go down that route of thinking that we are not good enough because so-and-so has done better or has achieved something quicker, that's toxic. If you want to become more confident, you need to be mindful about the things that you watch. Limit the time you spend on social media. That will help you not compare yourself, not compare the way you look. You need to be mindful and mature enough to understand that everyone is different someone is good at one thing another person is good at another thing and that's what makes the world go around and you have your own talents and gifts you have something unique to offer to the world even if you don't have something that someone else has but you have something and it's your job your responsibility to find that to tap into that 
It's about accepting yourself, which is point number three. I'm going to go on to that in a minute. So I really encourage you to not compare yourself to other people. I know this is so hard. And if I, someone who used to always compare myself to other people, as I mentioned, if I can do it, so can you. It takes time and practice, but understanding that all these standards for, for most things in our life about the way we look, about how much we earn, the job that we do, status, all of these things, it's been created, man-made, which means that not everyone's going to fit into these standards, which means that you need to unlearn these conditioning that you has told you that you are not good enough if you don't meet these standards. Give it your middle finger. I was almost going to do it. <laughs> Give it your middle finger and be like, this is me. And I am going to do what I need to do. Stay in my own lane. Life is not a sprint. It's not a competition. The only competition you should be on is the one with yourself. How much are you improving from yesterday or last month? The minute you go down competing your, competing with other people in an unhealthy way, in particular about the way you look, it's a losing battle. It's toxic. It's what makes people mentally unwell because they're constantly questioning their worth and their value. Point number three. How to become more confident. How to accept yourself more. My dears, my lovelies. Point number three is to accept yourself. This one is so important. In order to become confident, you need to realize that, as I mentioned, this touches with point number two, not to compare yourself, that there is only one of you. You need to understand that nobody in this world is perfect. Sometimes we can be our own worst critic. That voice that we have in our head that is constantly telling us that we are not good enough. Don't wear that sexy outfit because you don't have the body. You need to, you need to get rid of the, well, we won't be able to get rid of the voice because it's there sometimes to protect us, to warn us of danger. But you need to understand that these limiting beliefs that you tell yourself about yourself, it's not true. You need to accept that you are not perfect, I'm not perfect, nobody in this world is perfect, and you need to come at peace with your imperfections, accepting the flaws. When we see people who are confident, it's not because they look perfect or they have the perfect features. No, 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 no. It's because they've accepted who they are. They've accepted their imperfections and that is what makes them confident. The weird thing is, sometimes if, I think a lot of us women can relate to this, when we have issues about our appearance, many people cannot notice these imperfections. They, can, they don't notice these imperfections. You're the only one who's actually focusing on the imperfections. And that's why so often when you go and tell someone, can you see my spot? And they're like, mm. not until you mentioned it. People don't really see your imperfections until you highlight it to them. Most of the time, we are our own worst enemy. It's not anyone else out there. It's our own mind. It's what we tell ourselves. So to become confident, you need to stop. You need to change the stories that you tell yourself about who you are and what you can do. You need to change that story. You need to start accepting your imperfections, your flaws. That is how to become confident, understanding that nobody is perfect. Point number four, how to become more confident is to understand that confidence is sexy. Who doesn't want to be sexy? <laughs> okay, maybe some people don't. When you become confident, that is when you become a magnetic person. That's when you attract all the things that you want in your life. 
It's when you become confident. The relationship that you've been waiting for. The promotion at work. Other opportunities come flooding in. This is what happens when you become confident. And the truth is, for relationships, as I mentioned in the beginning, so many of us women, we focus on how we look externally. But the truth is, men love women who are confident. They friggin' love it. And I've spoken to so many men before, from guys who I've dated and friends hands down they will choose a confident woman because they don't want to deal with all the insecurity issues that comes with a woman with low confidence low self-esteem constantly needing validation and approval that's exhausting that's going to be hard to sustain and that's why men love confident women they love women who accept themselves who accept their flaws because when a woman accepts herself who loves herself, that is teaching almost, in a way, how a man should treat her. And men love that. Men love confident women. Well, most men, if a man does not really like confident women and chooses other things over that, I'm not sure if he's healthy, each to their own, but in my personal opinion, high value man, a high value man, a healthy man, wants a confident woman in my personal opinion. Sometimes it could be the looks that catches a man's eyes, but it's the personality and who you are that grabs his heart. That's what sustains the relationship. And this works both ways, by the way. I don't know about you, but I want a confident guy because that's what's attractive. I want someone who's interesting. I want someone who's got ambition and all of these things. It can work both ways. I'm just not just saying this is just for women. But what I am saying is that women can sometimes put so much focus on the way we look more than guys do. Right? We put more emphasis on how we look rather than working on who we are as a person, our confidence, our self-esteem, and understanding that sometimes we get brainwashed into thinking that we have to just focus on the way we look. But our looks is of course take care of your looks i'm not saying don't but the reality is we're all going to get older we're going to get the wrinkles at some point and we're going to age so what happens then when you're constantly relying on your looks it's a losing battle and men value women who bring more to the table high value men a balanced man who wants a healthy relationship a long-lasting happy fulfilling relationship he would want a woman who brings more to the table than the just than just the way she looks. Point number five, how to become more confident is to work on yourself. What do I mean by this? I mean to work on yourself, personal development. This is when you are working to improve yourself as a person. This is this means when you are overcoming any issues that you faced in the past, if you've had any trauma. You've done the inner work to heal. Because sometimes what what can hold us back from being confident is the things that we've experienced in the past. So, for example, if you someone who had trauma in the past or if you've experienced bullying, to become confident, you need to do the self-development work and the healing so that you overcome the things that you've gone through in the past and understanding that it's down to you, how you create your life and who you become. Understanding that your past is your past. You can learn to forgive people that have hurt you, but you can choose to be someone new. You can choose to step into a new version of you, step into a new identity of you, a more confident person. When you discover yourself and who you are, the things that you value, then you're less likely to focus on things that are not important. You're less likely to say yes to things that are not important to you. Just You're more likely to put boundaries in place, say no to people when you need to. When you work on yourself, you will discover what your passions are and what your hobbies are. 
if you can tap into the things that you enjoy in life, this is going to be a game changer. That means you're less likely going to seek validation and approval from other people. You're going to be confident in who you are. You know that you can make yourself happy. When you learn to learn new skills, when, when you find joy in passions, that is what brings confidence. You know, it really does. And I discovered this quite late in life. But so often we think that we have to look externally out of us to bring us happiness, to make us feel fulfilled. But actually, it's within you. If you can discover your passions and your hobbies, honestly, this it's something that you can keep forever. And this is what's going to make you feel confident, knowing that no one can take it away from you. Your passions and your hobbies, men come and go, relationships come and go, friends come and go, <laughs> even families, members, you may not see them forever, you know, but if you can find what you like, your passions and your hobbies, that will be with you forever. And that gives you confidence knowing that you've got yourself, you've got your back, that you'll be okay. Point number six is to take care of yourself because when you look good, you feel good and then you feel more confident. I know this may sound a little bit contradictory because earlier I said, don't focus on how you look. And now I'm going to say, do take care of yourself. It's two different things, right? What I mean by taking care of yourself is to show yourself some love, take care of your body, how do you do this? You do this by what are you eating? Taking care of yourself means that you are taking care of this vessel that we all have been given. It's, a, it's almost like seeing it like a tool for the things that we want to do in this world. If you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. It's so important that we do put effort into the way we look to some degree because this is what's going to help us feel confident. If you think about it, if you wear your favorite outfit and you go out into the world, I can assure you, you will be feeling completely different to a day where you're wearing just your jogging bottoms and you go out into the world. You will feel more confident in, the, in your favorite outfit. And that's what happens when we take care of ourselves. We put some effort into the way we look. I don't mean go extreme and put all the focus into the way you look. No, where you actually are showing yourself some self-love and taking care of yourself, what you eat. Are you exercising? This is taking care of yourself because when you take care of yourself, exercise, this is what produces endorphins and this is the feel-good hormone. This is what makes us feel good. When we feel good, we are most likely to be confident in situations. I know that the days I practice my everyday exercise routines in the morning. I feel more ready to take on the world. I feel more confident. I feel more radiant. Compared to those days when I've missed or skipped a day, I just feel more sluggish. I don't feel as good. And my mood is slightly different. And that's what I mean to take care of yourself, understanding that our body is sacred. And it's important that we take care of this body that we have, not in an obsessive way, but appreciating what we have and doing the things that you can control, that are within your control. Sometimes we cannot change the features that we've been born with so that we meet the beauty standards, right? But you can control how much sleep you have. You can control the, the, the food you eat. You can control the exercise that you do. We can do things within our limit to make sure that we are doing our utmost to take care of ourselves. Because in order to be confident, you need to take care of yourself. Confident people, they usually spend some time to nourish their bodies, to take care of their bodies because our physical health, our mental health, it's all connected. Our body, mind, it's all connected. And that's why it's so important that you learn to take care of yourself, take care of your body. Because this will really help you feel more confident. If you look good, you feel good, you'll be more confident. I hope this video has helped you a little. Leave a comment below if you can relate to anything that I have spoken about. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're all doing really well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.